switching gears here again. Um, we are back out here at 230 yards. Uh, I got the uh, the SPR, if you will, 16 inch Rainier Arms. Um, I'm dropping the bipod down in this this Atlas to as low as you can get it, which um, is one of the nice things about this bipod. If you want to shoot super low, you can. Um, and I'm not a huge bench shooter. In fact, I prefer shooting from the prone, off of not on a bench. Um, Zoom out here. So. Uh, we're going to try and hit some of these little plates. I'm going to start on the big one. Light, light degree down. And um, we're going to go from there. So, first round. Um, what's my hold here? 200 is 1.5. I, I, the thing is, I don't have a good dope for this this rifle, so I should really pull up my Strelic Pro. Um, we're going to dial two and uh, see where she's hitting. So we'll start on that 8-inch plate. I'm not going to hold any wind right now. It's pretty calm out here. Parallax seems good. That was a hit. I couldn't tell where because there's so many hits on that plate. Same. Um, let's go to the the plate on the far, far right. I think it's about a four inch plate. Uh, a little high left. Let's try one more. Same shot. Exact same spot, so I'm a little high. We are shooting downhill. Let's come down a half a minute. And we're gonna hold right just a little bit on the right edge of that plate. And we're gonna go to the little tiny one. And I think the little tiny one's about a three inch. I'll have to measure it. No hit on there. Let's try it again. The hit. I can't tell. Is it dead center or just to the right? Hit while it was moving. I'm not sure if you saw that, but it was still swinging. And as it came in, uh, I squeezed the trigger off and uh, hit it. I don't think it's attached too well down there, so it's not surprising that it fell off. But I mean, good enough for me there. Um, that was a 1.5 minute hold, which is about. Uh, my 200 yard hold for the last one and we are shooting downhill so let's shoot that little uh little spinner at the very bottom yeah yeah now it's red so i pulled that one left red again white Uh, pull down. Get back over here. There we go. And looks like we're up against the wood now. So. <laughs> um. Yeah, fun stuff. That's uh, CBC 77 grain OTM, which is a Mark 262 clone. And we found it to be really good, and that's what we've been shooting because the price is right, and it performs well above what um, most people honestly shoot, uh, given the gun. And um, I would say it applies for most of our applications regarding accuracy and stuff like that. So um, seems to be doing well. Again, I'm not sure what the dimensions on those plates are. I can go down and measure them, get a tape out, but yeah. 230 yards. We'll be pushing range more uh, in the future, especially when the crops are out. As you can see, the, the beans in the corn are still out down there, so we can't really shoot into those, especially with the uh, about ready to be harvested and the farmers out. So uh, we'll be back out here once the crops are out. So another thing I've been real careful to keep um, as accurate as possible is a round count book. Um, so I've got uh, a bunch of stuff in here. More or less, these are log books for holds. Um, I can mark off my 
my velocities for the day with the temperatures, elevation, humidity, all that jazz. So I have a little bit of a record here, a um, little weapon outfitters notebook. Um, but I do use impact data books uh, for that stuff as well. And I have a round count book, which I've been um, religious about keeping up to date uh, now that I have the uh, the new Rainier Arms 16 inch ultra match. Um, and a round count book is good so you know how many rounds are through the gun since the cleaning. Uh, you can start to determine when that, that rifle starts to degrade in accuracy and you can actually do another cleaning there, clean the bore and then kind of start over. And you'll know if you're keeping track well uh, when that rifle actually starts to tighten up as well. So um, it never hurts to really keep a round book. So I'm going to put in here another 20 rounds that we shot today. Not very much, just out here having fun, but I will make sure I put that in there. And we again, we're shooting the CBC 77 grain. So she's at about uh, 170. 78, basically 180 rounds now. Um, I like to get around 200 ish and uh, probably do another actually test just to determine exactly what the barrel's capable of after the barrel's been fouled. And uh, so far, I can't remember exactly, I'll roll in a picture here, but we're at about oh, uh, around the 50 60 round mark. We, we pulled a, a two five round groups that averaged, I want to say, 0.6 inch or 0.6 MOA, something like that. So I'll roll in some pictures. But um, yeah, good stuff here. Um, and I just keep these in like a, um, this is a VanQuest. I can't remember what model they call it, but uh, VanQuest makes some cool stuff. And a uh, pouch up front here, a lot of pouches in the backs, um, you know, Molly in the rear. So this is just something that kind of keeps everything together. Uh, we played at the VanQuest stuff before and actually forgot my pen today. So I'm going to, I'm going to update that in a minute. But um, I have uh, one of their, their IFAC packs here. Uh, basically took my ITS tactical kit that was in my ITS tall boy. Um, I do like the tall boy, but um, I wish it was a little bit, uh, had a little bit more space. Uh, you know, I got my shears and everything here. So, uh, like this guy, um, awesome pack. And I'm gonna steal my little uh, casualty card marker out of here so I can update my logbook. So, um, cool stuff to have. So if you don't, if you haven't checked out the um, these two packs from uh, VanQuest Gear, I would encourage you guys to do so. This is great for keeping your books and stuff around. And this, uh, I have, I've, no, I've seen real no quality uh, side effects. You know, there's there's no real downside to this, and it's it's a relatively inexpensive. Um, so I think the biggest downside to buying the IFAX, especially from like ITS, is that the the Tall Boy and the Fat Boy packs, which is actually what it what you put your stuff in, are are real expensive, and that's what really cranks your price up there. So if you can save money on the pack, um, that's really a, a good thing to do. So I found these work really well. So check these guys out. Um, good stuff there. And I got their, uh, their quick strips on the back and I attach this pretty much anywhere I need to. It gets moved around uh, when it needs to be. So good stuff. So check them out. So let's update this thing and we will catch you guys later. I'm not sure where they're impacting that plate, but I'm holding about a minute and a half to the right. I think it'll go through that display. There's a little red display down there at the bottom. It hit it, and I guarantee it went right through it. We'll look at it when we go up there. That's one. Good enough for me. 